Well, you know me already. I'm Cristina from Argentina. I work for a German company called uh, Biofarm, and I traveled all through Latin America, including Central America, but I've never been in the island. So for me, Caribbean region is new, and maybe I can help you. You know, I'm a, a professor at the university, so maybe this presentation is too basic for you, but I didn't know the level of knowledge you have, so we can go and run this very quickly. This is what we are going to do to analyze food microbiology and control hygiene. Then we will speak about compact dry. Those are some dehydrated plates for microbiology analysis. And then we'll talk about reader stamp. It's a new system like Rodak plates with the agar already on the plate so you can stamp in different areas. It's not for product itself but for surface but also product surface like fish, uh, red meat and cheese for example. Okay, when we talk about microbiology we have desired and undesired microorganisms. Uh, so it's not true that our food should be sterile. We should eat those microorganisms, but the beneficious ones, in order to obtain a very good and healthy immune system. In the food production, we have some microflora that is still in the food, and there are some other bacteria and fungus that we use in the food itself. They are called started cultures, like in yogurt, in uh, food, how do you say, salaminas. I don't know in English the word. Salami. It's salami, like that. So cheese. These desired microorganisms are natural degradators Maybe uh, some are involved in maduration processes. Influence states appear consistently and most of all shelf life. This we are not involved when we talk about food microbiology. They are, we analyze, but it's a different stuff than the analysis of undesired microorganisms. This are uh, separated, you know, into basic groups. The spoiling organisms that do nothing to your health but spoils the food. And you don't want to eat a uh, ripped food with fungus on top of it. Even though you know those fungus produce nothing to you, unless they produce mycotoxins. But uh, you can eat that, but you don't like to eat that food. Some organisms shorten the shelf life. You know, in the dairy produ production, even though milk now has a UHT process, you cannot leave that for 10, day, 10 years. They are not the pasteur balloons. That's not sterilized. They are only pasteurized. And most of all, pathogenic microorganisms. They really are a risk for health, and that's what we need to focus on. These are relevant parameters to be testing. Why testing total aerobic mesophilic bacteria? Generally, they are not pathogens. Most of all are not pathogens. But the media you use to grow this bacteria normally, uh, uh, normally can grow also pathogenic bacteria. So in most legislations of each country, we have a controlled number of what total aerobic bacteria can have a product. Then we analyze for coliforms 
enterobacteria E. coli fission. You know that enterobacteria belong to the duct guts, okay, guts I said, guts of most organisms, mammals, um, uh, poultry. So this shouldn't be in the food you eat, even though there are a small quantity of this enterobacteria that are allowed in most countries. That's because our organisms are able to resist against that development. Okay, E. coli, there's an exception for E. coli, not for child food and not for E. hect E. coli. Oh, 157 is not allowed, not at all. Salmonella and Listeria, most important group, yeast and molds, most of them are healthy. But you have to analyze Staphylococcus aureus and his enterotoxins, Campylobacter, Cronobacter, the group of the Steck and Heck, and of course, Bacillus cereus, Pseudomonas, Clostridium. In general, you don't analyze all of this unless you are asked for. Okay, these are what we analyze on surfaces. Total, Enterobacteria, Coliform and E. coli especially, Salmonella, yeast and molds, but it depends on the regular legal regulations. Sometimes you have to export and your country don't have any regulation for one type of microorganism, but you have to analyze that because the country receiving your goods have that um, regulation. So, Basically, basically, in every lab for food microbiology, we need to do all these procedures. Homogenize the sample, dilute it, plate it, incubate, and interpretation of the results. And for all of this, two steps are the most important of all. Homogenization of the sample, but that covers the taking of the sample, the plan you use to sample. If you use a wrong plan, your results would be wrong, even though you can't count exactly what you are analyzing. And the other one is interpretation. You can't realize how much wrong results are expressed because people do wrong the numeric calculations. They don't take in account the dilution they made, they incubate at the wrong temperature so the bacteria grows a lot or don't grow a lot. So these two points are the most important in every microbiology analysis. Supposing that you are plating and incubating in the right media. Because if you have a salmonella and you are using uh, a culture media for Staphylococcus, maybe you don't, found, you don't find any salmonella. Correct me because my verbs are awful. Okay, basic procedure. Prepare your sample, make the dilution, the steps you want. It's not obligatory to make a 10-step dilution. I don't know why all the people say, okay, I make a 10-step dilution. No, you can make a dilution 1 in 2, 1 in 4, 1 in 56 if it fits you. Because sometimes you have a small volume of your sample. So you put the correct amount of dilu diluting media to make the correct sampling of the, of the sample. Then you plate in the system you want. Okay, I'm very old and uh, um, 
I started microbiology and we only have handmade agar plates and we have the dilution system with the tubes. Now, I know yes, I have some labs doing this methodology and they work very well and that uh, average of bacteria fits very well with the legal regulations. So, use whatever system you want and fix fits your lab. You need to do some accredited methodology, you need to do that, but you can compare and make the validation of your method. But I have seen some laboratories without air conditioning and they work without air conditioning, so they do not have an incubator, they incubate at room temperature because room temperature is almost 30. So, uh, do not think uh, you need to do exactly and only the things that are um, told to you by an accredited and validated procedure. You can fix the methodology and harmonize it with the official one and then you play it and you count. Okay? I do not know what photo is this because those colonies are awful. Okay. Then, what to do and where to take samples? For microbiology, we have the HACCP plants. They are very nice, they are very good, they are very used, but sometimes you are not able to put that in a producing factory. So, you have to manage using the knowledge of HACCP and determine what critical points are in the production process. So, you can take the sample as official labs or you can train people working in a factory to take the samples in those points. Then, you have to determine what type of methodology you are going to use to measure that because sometimes the facility is too far away from the lab. So, it is better to do ok, I am going to do PCR, but the sample comes unfrozen, no control, so you have a lot of bacteria, two days after the sample was taken. So, take and defi uh, define countermeasures. You have to, to tell them, ok, take care, I am going to take the sample here, the sample when analyzed was not correct. So, teach the people you are analyzing how, what to do. And you can control raw material, process uh, products or final products, but you can also analyze surface, air and personal. And it depends it depends what you ana are analyzing and for what the risk that that food will produce. It is not the same a food that it is eaten raw than a food that is risen, um, eaten cooked. Even though you do not need to have some bacteria, even in a raw food that is going to be consumed cooked, you should take care of that also. Ok, some guidelines, for some, for some products there are general limits. For example, in Argentina for drinking water we have less than 100 CFU per ml of aerobic total count, but if you are having a little boy in a hospital facility born previously of his day of delivery, you will not give him this type of water, even though it is accepted by law, but you have to realize that you are analyzing not to produce a risk 
in consumers. For example, salmonella in food, generally in Argentina and in most South American countries, it's not detectable in 25 grams of sample. For newborns and infants, it's 50, or they are absent in 50 grams. So you have to take a look to that too. Uh, most of those limits are found in the European legislation. Okay, recommended. Here we have a problem. When you are testing surface, I don't realize that any legislative laboratory has really limits. How is nothing? No bacteria in 10 by 10 square centimeters? No bacteria in a hand? No bacteria in a product? The limit depends on what you want with that. So, when you are analyzing surface for cleaning and disinfection, you have to choose what you want. So, you start cleaning the surface. Maybe it's the surface where your food is going to travel. You clean it, you analyze, 100 CFU. Okay, you clean it again, 10 CFU. You continue cleaning, 1 CFU. And whatever you do from 1 onwards, you'll always have 1. So 1 is your limit for the best cleaning surface you can obtain. So never say to a customer, okay, you need 0. There's no way to obtain 0 if you clean in a correct way. If you have a fatty food, a lot of uh, oil on the surface, you need to clean maybe with a stronger disinfectant and to take away all this fatty layer. But maybe you are working with sugar and only with water. So choose the cleaning solution also correctly. Possible recommendations. For total count less than one per square centimeters. Enterobacteria, new detectable. In this case, enterobacteria are contamination of guts, so you don't need to have enterobacteria. E. coli, not detected at all. You shouldn't have E. coli, and sh you should clean and disinfect to eliminate all E. coli. But if you are cleaning the floor, maybe in a wet facility you can use water, you won't eliminate Listeria. So Listeria on surfaces are different, even though Listeria is a pathogen. Okay. What I'm talking today is about this plate. This plate we are going to work, or you are going to work, and I'll ask Christine because I brought a lot of them. I won't take them back to Buenos Aires, so whoever has a microbiology laboratory and wants to analyze, I can give them some. These are some plates. I think you know them. They are plastic ones. They are petri dishes smaller, 20 square centimeters in this plate with specific media, bacteria, bacterial media, for each bacteria you want to analyze. They are ready to use. It's easy to read results. They are incubated in the same way as a Petri dish, upside down in the incubator. And they are easy to store because they can be stored at room temperature before you use them. This method is an official method because the microbiological method inside is the one that it's stated in all the regulations. But it reduces time. Everybody knows that when you are working in a microbiology lab, we call it the kitchen. You have to weight the media, dilute it with water, a lot of temperature, or a few of it to dilute it. Then we have to separate in the volume you need, 
you have to autoclave it, sterile, put it in a stove to wait two or three days for a quality control. Then when you need it, melt it and pour in the, on the petri dishes and then keep the petri dishes on the fridge until you use it. But maybe you prepare 10 and you need 20 or you prepare 10 and you need 5. So the, the rest of it stays in the fridge for very few days. Then you have to throw them away. Okay, this you open and you use the number you need. Of course it's more expensive. Yes it is. But it helps you to reduce time. It simplifies interpretation. Why? Because the layer that uh, you obtain when hydrated is very, very, very homogeneous. Okay, you cannot do samples where you pour first the sample and then the liquid alga. You, all the samples are on the surfaces. Okay? And it reduces place because as they are smaller, you can use a smaller incubator. By the way, I brought one, so you can see the, the weight and the size of it. Of course, it need to be validated in your lab, because even though you can say these plates um, are in accordance with the official methodology, you need to make your own validations. Look, this is a plate. Sorry, this is in Spanish. But the plate can be stored at room temperature, so it has a very long shelf life. The colonies are very easy to count. If you turn the plate down, that's all lines, so you can count directly. You can pile them up. The, cap is very strong fitted so you can move it without slipping away. It's easy to handle because it has this part that you can travel with it with no problem. Here you have an area where you can write down the names. Remember in petri dishes we write them on the side because if you write it on the cap or on the bottom, you are not able to count the colonies. And you place the sample in the middle, as this is very hydrophilic, the sample will diffuse, will diffuse very uh, easily. Don't laugh at my English. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Look what's happening. You remove, remove the cap, you place one ml of the sample or the dilution of the sample. This is for all the um, bacteria unless salmonella. Salmonella has a special way of sampling in the plate. Then you let that diffuse, you put that in the um, incubator and then you can count the colonies. Okay, what's happening when you are analyzing surfaces with this type of plates? For surfaces, this plate, you cannot make contact with it. So you need to use, I brought some of this, is a swab. Isopo, we call that in Spanish. It's a swab. You can use whatever swab you want. I brought you one because for us it's easy. It has PBS on it, it's a buffer, a phosphate buffer. So you can swab the area and then place because it has a cup with a drop and you can place the sample on the plate. But you can use whatever swab you want and whatever dilution method and um, solution you want because this plate has all the nutrients and all the salts 
you need. This is different from for different plates. You can use water too. We don't use water because most of pathogenic bacteria don't resist being in water, distilled water. So we can use saline, 0.9% of salt. You can use PBS. You can use also um, peptone water. You can use buffered peptone water. It's best for salmonella, but you can use it here. So you can use whatever you want to dilute the sample from the swab and then place it on the plate. On the other hand, these plates are able to accept a filtration membrane. In Argentina, for water, for juice, fruit juice, and for some beverages, the legal recommendation is to filter 100 ml of the product and then place the uh, membrane, it's a point 45 or a 0.22 micrometers membrane on a plate. These plates are able to receive some um, membrane. I brought you, I don't think we will be able to, to use it, but these are disposal devices for filtration. They are sterile. They have a filter membrane here, and when you filter 100 ml, then you place the membrane on the plate. The thing is, you need to rehydrate the plate previous of sampling the membrane. Okay? So, as you see, you can place the membrane on top of the plate. And last but not least, this is how they look. This is a total count. This is for salmonella. Look, there is a change of color from the media, from violet, dark blue to yellow, and the colonies are differentiated because this is a chromogenic agar. In the case of salmonella, you need a pre-incubation of uh, a 1 in 10 dilution. So in Argentina, our law says you need to place 25 grams of the sample in 225 ml of buffer peptone. Then you leave that for 18 to 22 hours, and then you have to take the, that and place on a plate. As in that incubation, pre-incubation, a lot of bacteria you are not able to sample 1 ml. So you need to rehydrate the plate with water and then with a loop or with a sterile micropipette, you place 0.1 ml in this edge and let it move. That is why the colonies are placed in this area, first of all. This is the only plate that it's sampled differently from the rest. Okay. The presentation is boxes of 140 plates, but they are in this pouches, four plates. So in the 41, case, you have 10 of this, and in the other, you have 25. This is how they look. This is for Staph aureus, for Enterobacteria, yeast and mold, Enterococcus, Vibrio paremoliticus, list Listeria. What's the S? Okay. Listeria, Bacillus serius, and Salmonella. Look, this is the way you sample Salmonella. Okay? These are the characteristics. 
you need to, if you want, you read this on the Abai Farm webpage. You will receive the presentation, so you don't have to take care of them. But here is comparing the homing plates, the prepare plates, other dehydrated, here are Petrifilm, Rida Count, all the other brands we know in the market, and this is Compact Dry. Of course, this is a marketing slide, so we realize the best things. Yes, it's, it's true. If you have here a 3M presentator, he says, okay, mine is better because you can stack the, the, the plate on top and you can do stamping. Yes. We don't put that because we don't have stamping here. But uh, this is to realize what are the characteristics. They have a lot of approvals and validations also. And, okay, I'm lacking that slide. But uh, I brought some info in my stick that I'll give Ian so he can lend all the info to you. And the other product we are going to use today is this reader stamp plates. These reader stamp plates are only a contact plate for hygiene control. But in Argentina, when we say hygiene control, they used to think it's only surfaces, maybe knives, spoons, mills, hands of the operators. But with this system, you can also take samples of the uh, raw food or cooked food. In Argentina, for example, for E. coli, we have a regulation in when we ki you kill cows, then you take away all the inners, then you cut the cow by middle, and this middle part of the cow without the head and without the feet and toes, only the legs, are called media res. That means half of the cow. And there is a legal regulation organism called SENASA that it's aware of the, um, all the uh, food coming from animals that stated some points to be taken by stamping or swabbing for E. coli especially. Those are five points. Two are one beside the, the, the first uh, arm. Then here, I don't know Ingle, how you call that. That's the second. You have one near the neck, and, the, and then you have two inside. So if you don't obtain E. coli in those five points, you are sure that the slaughterhouse killed the cow and take away all the inners in a correct way. We have a kosher certification in Argentina and a halal one that uh, for halal is for, for Turkish people? Yes, Islamic people, okay. And um, they, and kosher is for Jews, and they take very good care of these five points. Okay, so here when you say hygiene control, it's not only from surfaces and spoon and knife and people, but also for product. The food should be solid. You're not able to stamp a milk or a yogurt. But yes, you can stamp a hard cheese. This Petri dishes are filled with specific chromogenic agar, and it takes care of the superficial tension. Is that correct in English? Tension superficial. When you fill the plate with more liquid than it is accepted, the liquid stays away from the border. This allows you to stamp agar when it is solid on different surfaces. The cup, it's not placed touching the agar, but it's a near space you can see when we uh, use this. These plates uh, are very easy to hygiene control. You open the plates, press them, close, incubate, and count. 
in this case, the plates are incubated in the correct way, not upside down. And okay, they are ideal to stack. They should be placed in a fridge when you receive the sample, even though they can be outside the fridge and um, almost at up to 30 degrees for three days. But then you need to place them on a fridge. Then you stack them in the incubator. You can stack them or pile them up, especially designed for that small size, and they uh, occupy a limited space. The major advantage is that this have a very long, 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 long shelf life. When I study, I used to use Biomerie plates prepared. They were lovely, but they have only one week shelf life. We bought them at the university and we received them with three days. Of course, we use it for 10. The university you use. <laughs> whatever you have on stock, but <laughs> the real thing, it's only five days. Now I think they are ten days, but this is a year, twelve years, twelve months. That's the major advantage. And we have eleven different products, and it comes in twenty-five or in fifty plates. I lost it. Okay. Oh no, here. They are packed like this in five plates pouches. So you have ten of this or five of this. This is the way you sample. Look at this. This is a surface. This is a cheese. And this is a red milk meat. You can sample directly. Mainly microorganisms in muscle, in animal muscles, are on top of the surface. So that's why you need to take care when you have chop meat, you say, mince meat, because the microorganisms are all inside the meat. That's why in some very wrong practices, uh -oh. okay, we are finished. <laughs> in Argentina, they wash the meat with bleach. When they have, okay, when they have the, ho the, the half of the cow, and the slaughterhouse is not habilitated, and they know they are doing wrong things. <laughs> yes, they wash all this half cow with bleach to take away all the bacteria. But you know, this reader stamp has an inhibit inhibitor of bleach. So you can sample even in those occasions. Sorry to say that, but in Argentina we say sacar los trapos al sol. That means to take the clothes to the sun. Those are secrets we keep for ourselves. But not in a lab group, because you have in your own country to analyze a lot of things that are done incorrectly. Yes. Destroys microorganisms. Yes. I don't know what strength they are using. So how you are able to recover from your culture the microorganisms? Okay. In general, bleach is very expensive. Bleach? Yes. So you have to. Okay. This is in a tank where you have th like this. So a lot of liters you are using. So I think they are not using more than 0.3 to 1 percent. Uh, bleach. So, bleach is chlorine and it's evaporated. 
So when the half uh, cow is uh, not wet anymore, most of the bleach has been evaporated. So what's left on the surface, it's no, um, no problem to the stamp. And you can see in the next slide, oh, it's not here. But we have one specially called DESI for disinfectant. And it inhibits not only bleach, but quaternary amines that are used for cleaning and uh, surfaces. This is all the plates we have. Those are 11. This is salmonella. Look, different types. E. coli, enterococcus, yeast and molds, staph, staphyridae, aureus, pseudomona. This is very important. In Argentina, we have a legislation for water for pseudomona because pseudomona stays in uh, water in the tanks and in the tubing of water. And this is Vibrio also. And I think. We have finished. OK, this is a mini incubator. Look inside, if you recognize, that's petrofilm. We don't sell petrofilm. It's a competitor. But the incubator is very nice. It's open, so whoever wants to use it can buy, even though they don't buy our special plates. It's true. Here we have something that helps us when the laboratory is far away from the facility producing the food to be analyzed. And these are poachers with one ml of solution, uh, saline solution, one, no, 0.9% saline, sterile. So you open the pouch, hydrate the sample, and place a lot, a lot of them. Lot of OK, if you have plenty of microorganisms, you cannot use it. Because you are able, OK, the, the size of this plate are smaller than the size of the uh, compact dry plates. In compact dry, you are able to count from maybe 10, 30, until 300. And in this plate, you are able to count from 20 to 200. If you have more, you are not able to. But this is a control of hygiene, so you should use them when you finish your cleaning. So you shouldn't have a lot of bacteria on. You shouldn't use that in something that you know it's highly contaminated because it's a hygiene control. So you should use that when you finish your cleaning and disinfection. And we don't have an application notes for food that has been treated with a very strong acid, even though malic acid is not, uh, lactic acid is not so strong, but it's very acid. So I don't have that validation. But our biofarm has a big R&D area. If you really are interested in do analysis with samples treated with lactic acid, we can help you making a validation. But at this moment, there's no validation with lactic acid. It's validated with bleach. It's validated with a quaternary amine uh, and a I don't think other disinfectants. So uh, you shouldn't use that if the surface has higher contamination level. The norm is to clean correctly, first with water, then you can treat maybe um, a, a, a iron, how do you say, acero inoxidable? Stainless steel. A surface, you clean it with acid and then alkali. 
Then you can use some soap, some uh, detergents to clean it. You can wash and scrap it. It depends on the surface. When you finish, you can use bleach also on surfaces. I was telling you a secret. Uh, food shouldn't be treated with bleach at all. But uh, on surfaces, when you finish the correct um, way of cleaning and sanitizing, then you use this to control. What we call this is a verification of your uh, sanitary status. Okay? You need to validate with the full uh, plates and then do contact and you say, okay, now you can start production. In Argentina, we have um, our potable water added with chloride. Yes. And yes. very effective. Yes, it's effective. Uh, even recommended though, recommended yes, production. even though people coming from other countries says uh, water has a, a, a different taste. So, also in some places we had about 10 years ago, an epidemic in the north of our countries, and two rivers were contaminated with an enterobacteria, not a salmonella, but cholera bacteria. So, uh, although the sanitary people that go there, physicians, doctors, and lab techniques, has uh, this chlorine pills to uh, make water portable. So they used that when they were placed in a location that was uh, very, very uh, complicated because of cholera bacteria. So, okay, in Argentina, there was a very old, old, old costume. To, to give water to the plants, and that water comes from the sewage, from the bathrooms. So, they have a, a very high concentration of nitrogen, so all the vegetables grow very healthy. But those vegetables were highly contaminated, highly, highly, highly. Not only with bacteria in Argentina, we are vaccinated for poliovirus, and it's a lip vaccine. So all the, the, the bathrooms in Argentina leave virus, uh, alive. So, in those cases, we teach people to collect the vegetables, wash them with water, and then add three drops of chlorine in a very big vessel and leave those leaves there for 10 to 15 minutes. Then you take them away, wash with potable water, and you can drink that. Now it is forbidden. You cannot um, water the plants with this type of water. But in some places, Argentina is a very, very big country. And there are a lot of places where very low income people live. And they do whatever they, they can, really, to survive. So we have to teach them not to change at all the customs but to prevent the health. And in those cases, we teach them to use bleach, but in very small quantities. We know that bleach evaporates, chlorine evaporates. So leave that, and they can eat very fresh vegetables with no problem to their health. Okay, in restaurants, they should buy vegetables grown in, a, like having SOPs, SOPs, very good, good practice of growing vegetables. That's a common recommendation, not when you buy something in a restaurant, but in some houses. Even though you wash it with chlorine and then you eat it like in a salad, with no cooking at all. But if you leave that salad for more than 10 minutes, all the bleach evaporates. So there's no harm to your health. And remember, you can consume some percentage of chlorine because the potable water has it. Vegetables have proteins, but the proteins are not exposed 
on top of the leaves. Because vegetables, the percentage of protein is inside the cell. So there's no way that chloramine is produced. But in me, okay, okay, sorry. In meat, the cells are exposed. So chloramine is, you put chlorine and chloramine are produced. And when you analyze for chlorine, they are there. And they're highly toxic. I didn't know they were carcinogenic, but I know they were toxic. So you shouldn't use that practice. That's why I talked about stainless steel. You can use the um, clean solution that doesn't harm your surface. If chlorine harms your surface, you should use a quaternary amine or a detergent or a mild solution. Uh, and say, okay, if you don't have a stainless steel um, re re recipient, how do you say, a bucket or recipient, yeah. then if it's not stainless steel, you cannot, you can don't, you cannot use acid and alkaline. Maybe in um, ice cream producer, they are all stainless steel, so they wash it very, very quickly with acid and alkaline. And you see, milk has a, a very high percentage of cream and of fats, so you have a bio a film that you need to take away. So you want to, to wash it and then put acid and alkali, but sometimes you cannot use bleach. Because in, um, in an ice cream producer factory, never get your box, buckets um, dry. They are always wet. So if you clean with chlorine, you should have chlorine in your ice cream. So you use a different type of disinfectant. Yes, I, I, I'm not very used of all the types of disinfectants you can have, but uh, you can tell them, okay, don't use something that hurts the surface. Also for cleaning your hands, we have a lot of factories doing stamping on the worker's hand. And I'm not going to make, put my hands on bleach. Okay, so uh, take care of the alcohol also. Now all over the world we are using gel alcohol and it's highly contaminated. <laughs> so <laughs> try not to use it so so. Okay, and so we have this solution. Um, um, this solution is sterile and you can take it with you. I, I brought some, but I've lost that in the luggage. I should take a better look. We have also micro pipettes. They are fixed volume, small ones, 50, 100, and 150 microliters that we will use with a histamine kit. And we can also provide you with some swabs. They come with a PBS, it's a buffered phosphate saline solution. So you can swab and then you can open the cup and you can drop one ml, it has here, in each plate. Okay, so I think this is the last. This is all I wanted to tell you about this simple and easy way of analyzing for microbiology. So I brought some of them. So I want you to use it with your own hands. I brought an incubator also. When I prepare all this, they are very tired. <laughs> Maybe if we can tomorrow, we can see some colonies growing. If not, you can realize what would happen in anything we are doing today. We are going to analyze some raw fish surface for contact and also for sampling. We have some, some device. We have these small swabs that come in a buffer solution. 
it's PBS, it's all sterile, and when you finish, I will open one, this one. When you finish, swabbing, you can drop it on the plate. It's a very good device when you use it in place. And then you take the plate to the lab. And you don't have to take the swab by its own. You have to put that in a transportation media. So this is easier. You only transport the plate. And you start counting the time from the moment you put that on the incubator. Okay? So, two of you. In this way, so you can be filmed. <laughs> and I'll stay my back. <laughs> so, come on, ladies. We have some devices. We have pipettes. This is a point 0.1 pipette. This is a, not a fixed one, but a mobile pipette in this, this side. This we have also fixed volume pipettes you can use. Uh, they are much more simpler, but can be used in the same way. Mm. No, no, it's. For microbiology, you need to use all sterile devices. Here we have sterile tips, 1 ml. Here we don't have sterile 0.1 ml because they are lacking salmonella. And uh, we can use those for 0.1 uh, ml for salmonella. We have also these devices. They are very easy to use. They come in packages, sterile. For 1 ml, they are disposal, disposable. In the university, we wash them. <laughs> and then we use for chemistry. Uh, OK, that's uh, true. We have here something to discharge the tips. So what are you going to do? Stamping, sampling. First, because you are going to do both. So you start with stamping. stamping. OK. These are stamping. These are salmonella stamps. They come like this. You break them like this. And this is total count. So stamp on the top. OK, I'll give you a marker so you can put your name on. And tomorrow we'll see. Chan 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 chan. <laughs> OK. Mm -hmm. You place on the border. And you can start with these. OK. The scissors, here they are. Place your name on top of them, of it. So this is for and this is, this for is a compact dry. Okay. Look. The different media has different colors without hydration. For salmonella, mm -hmm. you need to use 1 ml of that. Can you bring me that? Mm -hmm. That is distilled water. Mm -hmm. Really, it's not distilled. This is tap water. OK. okay. okay. What do I have? Another one. Here. Okay. This is, can you give me the pen? So I put this tad water and this is tap water. OK. So for salmonella, you need to place 1 ml of tap water using or this pipette or this device. Mm -hmm. The pipette should be used with these sterile ones. Mm -hmm. 
And then when you finish, you place one ml of tap water. We will think this is a pre-enrichment for salmonella. So you place one ml on top and 0.1 ml of this on the bottom. OK, I write it down. Sorry, I will use this blackboard. OK. For salmonella, this is the plate. We need to place here 1 ml of distilled sterile water. Why water? Because the media in the plate has already all the nutrients and salts you need. And no bacteria is placed in that water. So you can use sterile water. You leave it to hydrate all the plate. And then you place here 0.1 ml of the enrichment. For salmonella, there is an ISO, I think Christine showed you, that you have to enrich a pre-enrichment depending if it's FDA, BAM, or whatever, in buffer peptone or in um, some media, I forget in this moment, uh, medio, no, peptonado, no. OK, it's another media. It's, you can have to follow the ISOs. In this, we do an enrichment in buffer saline, no, buffer water, peptone water, OK. Like this. And overnight, 18 hours or 20, and you pick 0.1 ml. We don't have this, and of course, we don't bring salmonella. So uh, we will use tap water, hoping no salmonella is on it. <laughs> <laughs> and here we use distilled water. OK. On the other hand, she will sample to have some milk there or juice. OK, can I use these shoes? Thank you. <laughs> One ml in total count. <laughs> this is of sample or a dilution. Normally, this dilution is 1 in 10, but it's normally, normally to start. So we leave them working. I'm not going to be like this with her, so take a look on them while they start working. And if you plate here, 1 ml of your sample, and you obtain five colonies. What's the result you are going to inform? Again, you place a sample. The sample is juice. It's concentrated. It's the best I have. So one ml of juice produces five colonies. So the result here is five um, unidades formadoras de colonia, colony forming units per ml. Five, because the juice you cannot concentrate. In all your juice you have that. The only way of concentration of a liquid sample is to filtrate. So you place the filter here. You pass 
100 ml, then you take the membrane off, you put the membrane there, and you obtain five colonies. What is the result in this case? If you sample 1 ml, you have 5 CFU per ml. If you sample 100 ml, so you have 5 colonies in 100 ml, so 0.0. 5 for 100 Okay, 5 per 100, or you can say 0.05 per ml. Okay? Okay. On the other hand, if you are sampling a dilution, 1 in 10, and you obtain 5, then you have 50. Okay. We can do some homework. Okay. Start, ladies. <laughs> you are going to stamp. Okay. You are going to place 1 ml. Do you know how to use this pipette? It has yes. two stops. Yes. In Argentina, we used to uh, put in the first stop, mm -hmm. take the sample, and then very slowly, and then throw for the first and then the second then step. Then. Mm -hmm. then you can throw here, mm -hmm. you can throw the tip. Okay. So for salmonella, you need distilled water. Yeah, right. This first. So that's one system. Yes. It's in one, I place that in one. So, you just take it, take the cup, and stamp it okay. in one place. Okay, so it's I very hard. Yes, you can stamp, you, do you want to stamp two? Okay, yes, you can, we have a lot of them. Okay, stamping, that's okay. Yes, you can use the same meat. That's total count. Total count. Okay. Did you look how she worked? Yes. She worked okay? Yes. Thanks. Okay. Yes. What? We didn't discuss cost at all. Okay. Do you want me to tell you uh, they are more expensive? than preparing the plates yourself. Yeah. They are. They of course they are. Uh, I don't really know. I sent an email because I'm not in the commercial area. But we'll receive the cost. Uh, I only ask for the histamine kit. But uh, we'll receive the cost. They come in small quantities and in bigger ones. OK. so. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Only contact. If you press it too hard, too hard, yes. you are going to break the agar. So now we are doing these things well. Yeah. Next time we are doing them wrongly to see all the uh, troubleshootings we should have. So now we are starting for all of you to do well things. Things well done. Okay? Yes? And the time. Oh. No, no, it's only a contact one. Only. Uh, not 10 minutes. 10 seconds. Uh, and not one second and take it away. You have to make full contact, a little pressure, and take it. It's like swabbing. How hard do you swab? If you have a stainless steel surface, <laughs> if you have a cheese, if you have a, a car case, your swabbing pressure is different. Okay. Depending on the it depends. Uh, you can make some efficiency of swabbing and efficiency of contacting. It's difficult, but you have to contaminate a surface and then place with different times and different pressures. At least when you press hard, but not too much. 
for more than one second and take is the most um, high efficiency you obtain. And then you cover it at one time? Yes, you covered it. Okay, and? Ah, uh, because we are, oh, sorry. Okay. Yes, you finish, and it is well distributed. Yes, we're hydrated only with diesel water. Okay, diesel yes. water. Now you need to use tap water. Okay. okay. So and did you finish that? Okay, now you continue with the other. Oh, yes. This has. Uh, you need a napkin. Okay. Here we have napkins. Okay. I love so much fish, but not in this way. Okay. So I take that out. Lady, I place that there. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay, I borrowed some from the restroom. Is that okay? So I put out you have to take away the tip. Uh -huh. No expulsing because those are very simple. Okay, you are placing one ml and then you need a total count here. Yeah. So you can stamp yours. Okay. You can use juice. Okay. <laughs> no, this is water. Okay. And now you can do stamping. But now you can stamp a surface, you know? Okay, like a surface. Yes, a surface. So do you get this open? What? How do you open this one? Okay. I put my name here. And do like this. <laughs> oh, okay. It's my way of opening. Also, um, total count as well. Yes, you can use that also. This is finished? Mm -hmm. No. This is finished. Yeah, this side, yeah. Okay, and those two. Okay. Can we do some work? Some homework? Okay, starting with a liquid sample. You can use it directly, you can use it diluted, or you can use it filtrated. For water, juice, and some liquid samples in Argentina, our law says we have to analyze by filtration 100 ml. So, you use direct. If you use direct, you place one ml, and the result is the direct colony count per ml. So, for example, five uh, colony forming units, then the result is five colony forming units per ml. If you have 35, 
is 35 colony forming units per ml. Okay? If you use it diluted, the result is you sample 1 ml of diluted sample and you obtain 5 CFU. If this dilution is 1 in 10, you have to multiply the reverse of the dilution by the colony counting. So the result of this is 50 CFU per ml. Okay, so let's see this case and this case. What's the detection limit of this sampling? I repeat that for you again. Okay, the reason uh, of the, the how you have to reason is this. If I place one ml, the less colony count I can count is one. So if I place one ml and count one CFU, the detection limit for these direct is one um, colony forming unit per ml. When direct sampling, but when you have to dilute, maybe you then dilute one in ten and you, not, you obtain one colony. So the limit for this is 10. Know that? But if you dilute 1 and 2, the detection limit is 20. It's a 2 colony forming unit per ml. So this is what you have to remember when you are diluting your sample. If your sample has a very low contamination level, you have to dilute the lesser. So you can obtain a more sensible. Okay? If you dilute a sample that has two colony forming units per ml and dilute it one in ten, you are not going to obtain any results. And on the other hand, when you are analyzing not the detection limit but the sensitivity, microbiology is not an exact analysis. So you can obtain zero, you can obtain two, you can obtain nine, and the result is the same. So we are speaking in log intervals from zero to ten, from eleven to twenty, and no, from zero to ten, ten to a hundred, and a hundred to a thousand. Because the results in microbiology are expressed, for example, if I make a dilution, you are controlling, they are working well, no? Not to make some pressure on them, but. Ah. <laughs> okay. For example, you have a sample, you make the first dilution weight in volume. So you put, for example, 10 grams in 100 ml. You are doing 1 in 10 dilution. Okay? You continue making dilutions, 1 in 10, 1 in 10, and a third 1 in 10. Your final dilution, what is it? 10 by 10 by 10 by 10. Okay? See? 1 in 10 plus 1 in 10 plus 1 in 10 plus 1 in 10. And you repeat this sampling three times, for example, 
and you obtain 25 colonies, 15, and 40. You make an average, but different. Okay, 40, 10, and 20. That's better. 40, 50, 60, 70, dividido 3. Este vamos a poner 15 y 25. No, no. 25, 30, 40, 80, dividido 3. Oh, Dios. 80, 80 by 3. Uh, okay, the average, it's, no, not 90, average, it's 30, maybe. Okay, I'm going to do, okay, my math, it's terrible, okay, here. Yes, 90. Ah, it's 30, ok, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, so entonces, this is 20, and this is 30, ok? Ok, you obtain these results. The result is the average multiplied by the dilution. So the result would be this multiplied like this, and you express it 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, not in this way, but 3 by 10 to the 5. So, this is the range that your sample is contaminated. And this one in front can be from 1 to 9. And all the results obtained in this interval are correct. Because when you are diluting, maybe when you take one ml, you don't pick the bacteria. And the bacteria is on the other volume. Okay? So, did you finish, Mom? You? Okay, change places, place your samples on the incubator and leave the place to the second two. All the things you have used. Can we stack these? Yes, you stack those and this you place very well in this way. Oh, okay. is that the inverse? Yes, okay. upside down. Okay, this in that way. Okay? So, oh, you can open them. Salmonella and aerobic count are incubated at uh, 37 degrees. In some countries, a uh, total count is at 35. So you should incubate at the temperature the legislation is. So, two more. Okay, the unknown lady with no name. You know, they're friends. They're friends. Two days talking and chatting and whispering <laughs> and all the same. And what's your name? Three days actually. Three days. Three days. <laughs> Mine is Christine. Your name? Crystal. Crystal? Crystal. Crystal. Very hot. Crystal. Okay. I present you. Your name? Leah. Leah. Okay. Now, for these two groups, we are going to do some different thing. We are placing some sample. I didn't, I only brought a pair of scissors, so for microbiology, you can use a mixer. We have something called stomaker, so you place the sample, weight the sample in a controlled way, and add the volume you need to make a 1 in 10 dilution. We made a very non-important dilution, <laughs> so you place the quantity of necessary water, then you close your, in this case your vase or your bag if you have an estomaker, and you have to extract all the bacteria to the liquid phase. So you are going to sample a 1 in 10 dilution 
in salmonella and in total count and then you will stamp okay take this don't be shy they pale the pale yellow al total count and the dark violet al salmonella okay okay you can place the name your name on it and here you have the reader stump this is salmonella the media is the same for compact dry and for reader stump for both bacteria okay Yes, on the side. Okay. So, you are going to put in the salmonella, this one, one ml of distilled sterile water. You can use this pipette with the sterile tips or you can use this type of pipettes. Those are disposal ones. Okay, you can open uh, the lady that used it, put this inside again. Okay. Okay, for this place, plates, I place my nail there mm. and do it like that. This are much easier. This is to take a look to her work. Okay. Yes, on this you place sterile water. On the other one you can place this. And you can place sterile water. And on the other one you can place one ml of juice. Okay, so we have all the, for salmonella, both of you place one ml of distilled water, this, mm -hmm. to rehydrate the plate. Then you place 0.1 of these and you pro put 0.1 of that. On this one or this one? On salmonella. Oh, and on aerobic to one ml, not 0.1, one ml. And on this you put one ml. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then contact, we can contact the other slice of fish and we can contact some surface and maybe we can contact some hands. Okay? <coughs> Who is doing microbiology in the labs? Okay, you two, you two, you and oh, you. No, no, by yourself, by hand, oh. not the lab, by hands. You, you, you two. Okay. So, I'll, I'll give you some plates. And both uh, the other ones that have a microbiology laboratory, I can give you also. But best if the people working with it use it. But you can give them to, to the microbiology lab. And how did it feel? Okay? Okay, nowadays in microbiology lab, there are two ways of work. With a Bunsen, with fire or with a campana, how do you say? Uh, yes, a biosafety cabinet or a cabinet with not movement of air. No, no, only a closed cabinet. Well, yes, a clean bench because nowadays for biohazard, the Bunsen uh, thing it's not used anymore because we are using solvents even though in microbiology the only solvent we use is ethanol 
but uh, you can burn yourself. So nowadays we are using all this device. Okay, here is a pair of scissors you can cut. Uh, all these devices are sterile, so you can work very safely in a clean bench with no movement of people, with no air movement. And you don't need really um, safety hazard cabinet, only for pathogens, only for pathogens. The thing is that when you obtain a positive result for Salmonella, even though in Spanish we say bacteria don't fly, you have to take very, very care of that sample. Of yourself, one ml, it's, no, it's, I gotta come down. Yeah, here. Yeah. To here? Yeah. Okay, I'll be Okay, and you place it, yes. No, you use this. <laughs> you can use this other pipette. I have more of this than of the and other. Point one of the fish sample. Yes, on there. And this is to throw away. Okay. One ml. Uh, what do you need? One ml of the fish. Yes, one ml. And you, what did you, you put? Point one with this. One ml, and in the other, point one of this. So this is fine, this one is fine. It's I fine, put, it's I finished, one, one ml. ml. Okay. It's a, and, and then one. you put, yes, very small, with this. On the other, in this point, you place this in there. One. Yes. in the middle, that you place in the middle. Only the salmonella sample is placed in one edge. Okay. So you leave it, so it's all rehydrated. No, ah, you are going to do salmonella. Yes, it's okay, sorry, it's okay. So choose where you can stamp, you want to stamp. Okay, yes, it's okay. Hope we don't find salmonella <laughs> at all. And on the other hand, you want a hand? Or oh, yours or mine? Yes, of course. I've cleaned it. <laughs> okay. Choose where you want to stamp both two. Maybe salmonella, you stamp the. Salmonella. salmonella. Yes, it's the, the darker salmonella and the other total count. Okay. So salmonella, maybe you place it on the fish. Yes. And the other one, whenever you want. Okay. Do like this with the cups. The other one, this should be like this and we place them on the incubator. Okay, those no, those are straight like this. Okay, and where are you going to stamp it? Okay, fine. Okay, so play this in the incubator, you can place on top, you can stack them uh, by th 10 and the other one by 10. Okay, next group. What? I wanted a quick photo from one of those girls, I don't remember their names. Okay. Touche. Touche. Let me get a quick, let me get a quick, a quick. Mm, okay. Let me, let's okay. Look at okay. Is the temperature okay? Yes, it's 35. Okay, next group. Okay. Ah. 
Yes, but the other two upside down and those uh, the right way. Yes. Okay. Yeah, better side because the camera is on that side. So. Okay. Okay. Put your name on all the plates, and you should analyze for salmonella and for total count. So, for salmonella. I think it is better to do this sampling. Mm -hmm. Remember that for salmonella, you have to rehydrate the plates with an one ml of distal sterile water, so it should be closed. And you have to use a sterile tip or a sterile one-use pipette, OK? So please. 1 ml of sterile water and then 0.1 ml of this extraction. It's dilution 1 in 10. You can use this pipette or this pipette. So 1 ml of distilled 1 ml of distilled water. Yes. And then, meanwhile, you can place 1 ml of juice. Try and take from the upper side another sedimentation. Uh, or 1 ml of tap water. You choose whatever you want. And then place here stamping the salmonella, but then you can stamp whatever surface you want for the total count. The total count is this one. Yes, and the salmonella. Yes, this is stamping. Okay, and it is for the juice. Yes. Okay, it's placed in 1 ml. This is 1 ml. Yes, look like this. This is a mobile pipette from 100 to 1,000. So if you place this on top, it's open. So you move it to 100. Then you place it backwards. So two points, first and then the second. So you place the tip. No, don't touch it. It's sterile. OK. One, you take one ml slowly the with the pipette. Yes. And then you throw it in the, OK. You have to open it first, and it's very hard. OK. You have to use your nails. Okay, only one ml of water here. In the middle. Okay, then you throw the tip on there. Ejecting. The tip. Yes, ejecting. But then you first have to place the cup on it. This is not chemistry. This is microbiology. So you should maintain that in a sterile form. OK. Now, OK, you hydrated that. OK, first, 1 ml of water. 
first one ml of water. Okay. So you need that. And then? After this. Yes, this is not sterile, so it's okay. okay. Is it no. The yeah, other big one. But you can use this. It's the same. Because mm -hmm. a pair of scissors is. I lost the scissors. Okay. okay, this two ladies came here and the scissors were on top of the table. Now no scissors. So, oh. give me the scissors. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Yes, I know. <laughs> okay. okay. One ml. Up to here. Look. Up to here. Okay. One ml. Yes, the pair of scissors is there. It appeared. Magic, magic. Okay. Take this. Okay. Mm. No friends at all you put on the box. <laughs> no friends at all. <laughs> Oh, she has a wonderful smile. Okay. So one ml going into this one as well. Water. Um, okay, you are going to analyze water. So. Separate the water in. Yes. Then you take this and you eject it. So yes. Right. Okay. So yours is finished because this needs only one ml of sample. So you place water. So remember yours is water. And this is this extraction of the fish. Right. Now you need to stamp this. This on the fish and the other whenever you want. Okay, so I'm putting one ml. Yes. N n you put one ml already. No, this is this is the actual. Ah okay, so I you need this. Here. Okay. It's point one with this tip. Right, this is not point one yet, right? Yes, this because is this is a 10 to 100. Right, okay. So. No, no, and this tip. tip. Oh, this tip. This one. No. In the total count, you need to spread 1 ml one ml of sample okay and in the salmonella only 0 0.1 ml okay. okay but you have already placed water on yes. this one on this one yes both okay so, yeah, so that's your sample you place water you analyze water ah okay fish water oh no distilled water okay you analyze distilled water that's finished only for the salmonella you need to hide it Okay. Only for salmonella. Okay. Did you place right. so point one there? Yes, this, this is a sample. Right? Yes, oh. is a sample. sample. Point one on point one, one and here. here on the side. Yes, only there. Okay. All right. That's okay. Cover it. Cover it. Leave it pre it spread. Spread. And then you take the. So I'm not taking. Um, yes, off. Yeah. And I'm taking another of this. No, 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 because this only needs one milliliter of the sample. And you have already placed one ml of water. Okay. This needs to be rehydrated previously of for sampling. Because salmonella has an enrichment step. This no. So here you should place one ml of this. One ml of that, one ml of water. You choose water, so it's okay. You are analyzing water. These oh, two see. are finished. Finish. Okay. Now you need to do this. Okay. I think for this, it's better to contact the fish. Maybe, for me, it's very ugly, this, so I'm going to turn that fish upside down. Yeah. <laughs> I choose chicken for today's meal, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> in case, <laughs> okay, 
so stamp. So just stamp it. Yes, yeah. stamp it, touch it. It's okay. okay. And that's Come don't on. do like this. No. Only no, stamping and take it away. Okay. Did you do that? Yes. Stamping? Yes. And the this one? Yes. With both. the same? Both there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So stamp this one. Yes, okay. you can stamp the fish or you can stamp my hand or your. Stamp my hand? Yeah. Yeah. Here you see all yes. You should obtain nothing because she's laughing at you. Yeah. No, look at what I did. I put this part on top. No, no, it's no, okay. That's okay? Okay, so in that part. Yeah. Fine. So, this should be stuck in this form and this and this form. Okay? Well, next group of two. Now, you are going to do swabbing. Okay? You can stack on top of the other participant plates. Okay? We can take this and stack them on top. Okay. Yes, it's okay. Yes? Stacking 10. 10. I think you can stack more, but 10, it's going to fall down because here, um, no contact with the plastic with the air of growing the bacteria. Mm -hmm. So the media is well cupped. Mm -hmm. It's as the petri dishes, the glass petri dishes, you can stack until it falls down. Okay. So the, the, the most easy for you, the most you're stuck. Okay, it has inside a thermometer, but for microbiology, you choose a temperature plus minus one degree. So it's, it's a very broad range of temperature. And unless you are analyzing some specific thermosensitive bacteria, for total count and the majority of bacteria, you can incubate from 35 to 37. It is okay to. So you need an incubator, but not a very a uh, strong one. So whatever incubator you have, it's good. Okay, now you'll receive this violet or salmonella and the pale one a total count. These are for stamping. You can stamp whatever you want. So this is one each. Please put your name on. And this are compact dry plates. These are for placing one ml sample, but maybe you can do some swabbing. Okay. Okay. So for swabbing, you have to choose one of these devices. Remember that here we have 10 ml of PBS. It's a buffer solution and only one swab. I have a used one here. So you do like this. No. You take the swab, you squeeze it like this, then you sample 10 by 10 centimeters, turn the swab mm -hmm. and do like this. 10 by 10, you put inside the liquid, squeeze the liquid, squeeze, and when you finish squeezing, you can place one ml in your plate. And you count the ml because here are See? Okay. So you place like this until it's one ml. This is diluted. It's a surface of 10 by 10 in a 10 ml. But you are going to place only one ml. Okay? So then we can take care of the dilution. Okay, so with this, if you want, 
but I want you to do it by yourself. Maybe you can do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. The next group can use this. Okay. And uh, know how to swab. Okay? Learn how, how to, to swab. And in this one, so you place from this one ml here. Mm -hmm. This one you place one ml of distilled water and then 0.1 ml of sample. Maybe this sample, but you can analyze whatever you want. Ooh. And on the other hand, when you finish one ml, you put 0.1 of this, this, whatever you want. You have to rehydrate so one ml of water. water. Point yes, one ml of sample. And there's one ml of sample or one ml of swabbing solution. And then you stamp the, the, the meat, the fish meat, mm -hmm. and then you stamp whatever you want. Your hand, your <laughs> the table. Okay? So for one ml you can use these or you can use those. Yes. Uh, break it. Break it and then cut this end. Yes, one ml of water. of water for the duck violet. Okay. So one ml for this. Yes. One ml of water for her. Of this styled water. Yes, ma'am. It's hard to open. Now, uh, what do you use to clean a microbiology area? The table of work. 7% ethanol. Why 7 70? Why 70 and not 60 and not 100%? Why? The Why? This is the best concentration of ethanol to eliminate the aerobic bacteria you can have on top. Why? Yes. Okay, that's a question I make in the exams for my children. <laughs> oh no, I use 100% because it's better. And one said, I use PCR quality, 100% ethanol. <laughs> so you need to use a solution of ethanol that can go inside the cell and cannot let the cell to produce pores. So, if you have to keep a sample preventing for contamination, put in 70% a, a ethanol. We use the, those that we use at home. So, we place alcohol in the vaporizer. And uh, we started not using paper towels because of the cutting of the trees. But you have to take care a lot if you use some um, cleaning clothes, because that is the most contaminated part of the lab. So each day when you finish, you have to wash it. And in that case, put bleach, put whatever you know to clean it. First with wash, um, soap and water. OK, uh, that's why we don't. Uh, tell you to use uh, Bunsen with gas and fire because uh, alcohol flame doesn't see, you don't see that the alcohol is burning but it burns as if you saw it. So, and it's finished. This one is finished. With point 0.1 also. Okay. Yes. On one, okay, edge. Now, you are swabbing. You need to swab. That's right. Yes. And I left you. No, no, it has none. It's very simple one. So you can use this one. It's not used. You have to wear special material for your lab coats and the micro lab. No. Yes, do I see our workers have the normal lab coats? No, that's not special material. Okay, you can use disposal material or you can use um, glass material. But if you use glass material, you need to sterilize pipettes, 
for example. Ah, okay. Uh, now we are starting to use coats of linen, ver algodón, cotton, not synthetic, because of the burning. So, uh, and we don't use disposal coats. We use a specific uh, white coat for microbiology. We take that away when we go home. We don't wash the coats at home. Don't wash the coats at home. Wash the coats in the lab. And if they are dirty, ask your chief. If you are the chief, uh, well, manage to wash because you are taking this with Salmonella, E. coli, staff, and the wash machine where I wash my children clothes. So. Yeah. Yes, we use cotton. Uh, the thing is that cotton, um, como se dice, se arruga. Uh, you have to wire it, but we don't wire it because it's uh, uh, iron. It. Okay, sorry, iron it. So we wear one that it's sort of like this. But yes, wrinkle because no, it's no synthetic. But we prefer being like this than to have to iron it. Yes, yes, in the hospital uh, laundry is okay. But sometimes a lab, it's not inside a hospital, so. And sometimes there's a system for washing all this stuff, and you can send it. But don't wash them by home. If you are, are not able, try and use disposal ones, but don't dispose them. <laughs> so you use until they are, break, are broken. Okay, sorry to tell all those stuff because in Argentina, a reality of official labs is that they lack money. They have no money, so you come and say, okay, use a disposal pipette. Oh God, I clean the disposal pipette. Yes. Yes. Well, okay, they uh, clean it and send it not to the microbiological area, but to the chemistry area. And they also clean the tips sometimes and in the university. All this stuff I throw away, I put in a bag, and I go with that bag to the university, and I tell the people that clean the, the, the glassware, okay, this is for you. And they are so happy. <laughs> but we used to wrap the glass pipettes in a paper, put cotton on the top, and put in an oven, uh, 155 degrees centigrade, and then take them away and use a pipette holder. And that's why I I know to how to work with this uh, this small fingers because I take this and the pipette and then put on. But this is reality in my country. If your country is rich, club. Yes. No, you have to. You have to stamp that. You stamped it. Okay, and you have to uh, put your name on it. Name on it. Okay, and then you use the swab. Yes, we did. So you swab, then you squeeze, and then you place one ml. So this has sample. Yes. Okay. Next. Okay, where you want. Okay. 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 So that's it. Okay. This you place like this yeah. in the incubator. This For one. this you do like this and, and you place upside it's down. Okay. okay. Do you yeah. know why the petri dishes? I am a teacher, a professor. Why the petri dishes are incubated upside down? Yes. For? Okay. Because the condensation cycles makes the water go down. And if you place like that, the colonies are spread all over the surface. No, I want to be like points. Because when you grow, back to, you grow bacteria, the seeing the colony is a distinct characteristic of the colony. Some colonies are bright. Some colonies are opaque. Some have a very sharp edge, and the other is defuminated. 
Some has, if you look at the light, like E. coli, has bright with different colors like oil in the water. Like that. You do like this and the colony flushes with but different it's colors. It's put on the petri yes, I mean, of that's course. You can see it brighter. Of course, colonies, unless you are sampling fungus or um, uh, yeast and molds, the bacteria has no color at all. The color is given because we have in the media some chromogenic substances that turn the media and the color is changed. So some colonies have a black center because, uh, okay, they can metabolize iron. Other has a green outside because they have a pigment. So colonies, the world of bacteria is somehow nice. <laughs> of course, yes, of course, if you find an E. coli effect in the blood of a little child and an infant, you start crying, even though the colony is wonderful. But uh, you don't have to be. What you say if it puts an end? What is the name of the stuff if it puts an end to see it, like flora? Right? So yes, but it's a, a chromogen agar. There are some, some substances that when a bacteria metabolizes, produces some products that are able to change the color of the media. Some colonies are producing an halo outside. Others are grown in an agar that has blood and has the ability to break all the um, red uh, globules in the, um, in the blood. So the bacteria grows in the middle, and the halo makes the agar transparent. So uh, you have to see the characterization of the colony. Yes, and that, you, if you see it's white is one thing, if you see it's green is another thing, and then you can follow a dichotomic a tree of decision. Okay, I'm in love with microbiology. <laughs> You're a chemist. Okay, second group, a third, a fourth. Okay, well, these are reader's stamp. Okay, this we have to take out. These are contact plates for stamping. This violet are salmonella, place your name on it. This pale one, a total count. No, you place it uh, here, or here, or here. Leave this area and this area clean. Okay. Oh, Dios. All right. Yes. I have another one if it's failing. <laughs> yes, you can start stamping. Salmonella, please stamp whatever near the fish because that's the most high probability to have some salmonella. So stamp it whenever you want, like that, it's okay. And you place the, top, the cup on top of it, that's it. And these you can stamp whenever you want. Okay, so you finished this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Both of them are stamped? Yes. Okay, now 
For salmonella, place one ml of distilled water with this pipette or with that disposal one. Here you have one. Okay, this is soap. What, what do you prefer? You guys? Okay. Do you know how to use this? First stop and second stop. You have to use these sterile tips, open and shut. Okay, this side water is this. Okay. Okay. For her. It's okay. Up to here. <laughs> and the middle. Okay. Here, up to here. You squeeze and water up to there. Okay, now you throw the pipette here. The tip, sorry. Don't throw the pipette, it's mine. <laughs> okay, so this is finished. And for this, you need one ml of this sample. No, no, too, too much, okay, too much bubbles. Okay, squeeze it, all the, the liquid. Okay, take a look. You squeeze, you put in the liquid until there, and then you stop squeezing, and then you put that, okay? If you continue, it goes up, okay? So, that's it. <laughs> okay. Okay, hope we have the prize when we finish lunch, after lunch, okay. I don't remember the after and before, because in, in Spanish, before is antes, so with the A, so I said, okay, antes is after, y before, Okay, es después. So that's what I'm mixing before and after. Okay, did you finish putting one ml here? So you should put 0.1 with this, or with this, and with the yellow tips of sample in this extreme. Maybe that, maybe juice, maybe water, whatever you want. This is for disposal. Okay, this, okay. So you can use the other one. This is, it has also two points. You didn't name this? No, I didn't put my name on it. Okay, don't forget to. Okay, did you put one ml of water already? Yes? No, 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 no. You first have to put one ml of water. Okay. Did you place one ml of water? No, sorry. You should place one point one here of mm -hmm. salmonella. This is for one ml. Did you place point one? One ml of water on here. And point one of sample? Okay, so you place point one of sample there. And point one of sample there too. 
Okay? In, uh, okay. You should put it on this edge, but it's okay, put it all in the middle. You should put in one end here and let the it spread. Okay, it's okay. We are here to learn and make all the mistakes possible. This is not exposed. Press to the first. Okay. Do you know how to use this pipette? No. Okay. This pipette has two stops. First, mm -hmm. and then a second one. Mm -hmm. The second one is to blow. Mm -hmm. So, you put down to the first. Take the sample. Mm -hmm. Then go and place it on the plate. The first, and also the second. Two, two times when you are spreading the sample, oh, okay? okay? So, Thank you. And it's okay. To the first, to the first, then you put inside and take, no, but you didn't take anything, no. You down to the first, inside the liquid, no, 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 down. Okay, inside the liquid, push the finger up slowly. The liquid is sucked. Then you place point one there in that extreme. First. Okay, and then second one. Okay, and touch it for the drops. That's okay. So put the, t the cup on it and Take the tip out. Okay, that's it. So, for this, you have finished. Mm -hmm. This is one ml of sample mm -hmm. you can use. One ml of these, you can use one ml of these, or you can use one ml of these. Choose what you want and put the name of the sample there. Mm -hmm. But you can use one ml pipette. Mm -hmm. So, you. Okay, that's fish. No, no, you don't need to hydrate that. You can use this. If you don't know how to use that pipette, this is easier. So you can use, if you are taking this, take from the top, not the sedimentation part. And what do you want to use? Do you want to, to spread? This one ml drop by drop. Here you have. So you have from one line to the other, it's one ml. You have to take, it's a flip top cup. Okay. In the middle. We're putting this in the middle. In the middle, yes. Very up, 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 like this, vertical. Like that, and you have two, one ml. Okay, I think it's okay. Yeah. That's it. So leave that to spread and then put your name, your signature on the four and then place them on the incubator. What is this? this is a swab. It's PBS, a buffer solution and a swab. Okay? Did you finish with the juice? Okay, so you can put that here. Okay, next. Mm -hmm, ladies, don't run away. I know, I can't. Okay. So you can stack them up together. Okay. You'll receive one of each. The blue is salmonella, the light yellow is. Uh, for salmonella is a TSI, I think. No, TSI? no, no. It's so oh, I have it. Okay. I have it. It's not brilliant green. It's, um, it's um, BS. Um, no. Okay, we'll get it out. No, I find out the composition. Okay. 
Okay, for salmonella, you need distilled water. Okay. Okay, we are leaving, we are leaving. And no, this is not what you want. You want the other one. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Okay, this is also salmonella, but it's a stamping method. And this is total count. So that's compact dry and that's... That's reader stamp. Reader stamp. Yes. Okay, ladies, you can place one ml with that pipette or with this pipette. If you use this pipette, you should use these tips. Yes. So one ml of uh, distilled water. To hydrate the Yes, to, the, to rehydrate the salmonella plate. They are very hard to open. Yes, I use my nail. <laughs> okay, with the scissors. And you have to open in this side. No, because this is sterile. Okay, up, like this. Let me tell you a secret. This is expiry data. So they are not tired. Okay, but try and keep all the, okay. Yes, you can use tap water, it's the same. But you should know you have to use sterile water. Put it in okay. the center? In the center, for rehydration in the center. Okay. Well, oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, no, you only stamp it. Okay, nice. So this, it's just throw away. Okay, then for the aerobic count, you have to put one ml sample. So choose what sample you have to, you want to analyze. You have juice, you have fish, you have, um, this is a swab for the fish, whatever you want. Swabbing technique, you take the swab off, squeeze it, not too much liquid, then sample the surface you want to analyze two ways, then you turn this and on the other. 10 by 10, you put inside the liquid and then you squeeze it again two or three times to get the bacteria free. Mm -hmm. Then you put that and you can right put one ml like this. And you count here the lines in between two lines is one ml. In between here. From here to here is one ml. Okay. 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 Yeah. So you can sample whatever you want. Swabs, this is uh, fish or tap water. Okay. 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 Yes, it's hard. You can use the same tip. Oh, you, you are going to use, okay. Tips I have a lot. In the middle, it's okay. Not so, okay, not so high. Put it because, okay, because oh, it's, it's splashing. Okay, it's, uh, you need to place one, 
with or without the meniscus? You. Okay. <laughs> yes. Because uh, it's not an exact science, microbiology. You need know, to know yes. if, if there is or there isn't. Yes, it's not so. Bad. Yes, not really bad. Not okay. Yeah, I think uh, you place too much. Too much. Yeah, yours is okay. Saturated. Okay. Yours is okay. Saturated. You have to suck the water until here. Oh, it squeeze too much. Yes. Yeah, so I think you put a lot of water there. Maybe you can use another one. Okay. You can leave that. Okay. No, no, I have this. Don't, don't open a new one. Okay, you can use this. But take a look. Here. So. Maybe like three meals. Okay, this one. So, you squeeze. You put there until the water is up here. And then that's it. And then you place it in the correct. Okay? This. I don't think it will absorb all the liquid. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's okay. This you put in the middle. In the middle? The water in the middle. the middle. No, the Some water is in the, in the middle. And the oh. sample in the corner. Oh, but to me, on the drawing, you put this the uh -uh. water to the top. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can put it on the top, too. No, I mean when you were drawing on the on the on the board. Yes, it's true. No, it's in the middle. Okay. Okay. This is for this card. Yeah. Yes. And then you use uh, this pipette or the smaller one okay. with a yellow tip there for 0.1 ml. Okay, put your name on top of the plates. Okay, and this should be incubated in this way, and this and those correct way. Okay. It's on top. Okay. Yes. Okay? And you throw the tip there. Okay. You cut them both very well, like this. Put this uh, maybe uh, the other way. It's almost 3 ml. So we can see the difference. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the sample on that. No, 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 it's only 3 ml. Okay. So you can incubate those in the incubator. Okay, we'll wait for her because yes. so anybody knows she's late. She's the last. Nah, it's okay. To make it more funny because if not, we are tired. Okay. Yes, yeah, oh, sorry. Okay. And you write on the bottom? Will you, will you label on the on No, the on, on the other side. side. On the side. Made in Japan? Yes, they're made in Japan. Hopefully not in China. <laughs> yes. They are made in Japan. I don't, I don't think China has standards. China follows the standards. But the thing is that if you want things done well, even though in China they do things well. I know, I'm sure, but there's no control. No control, not really quality control. So, okay. Straight, yes. Okay, who is, who doesn't, didn't work? You three? Okay, come, all you three, or two. Okay? Okay, two, come two on. 
on the front will change the fish. Okay. So, these are compact dry, salmonella, and total count. Salmonella should be rehydrated with 1 ml distilled water. Okay. So you can use this pipette and this tips, or you can use that pipette uh, open from this end here. They should be sterile, but if you take a look, this is the expiry date. So they are not sterile. This is yes, but this no, I have none of the other. So you open this on this side, you do like this, and the, the water should come up here. Okay. So, you know how to use that? Two stops? Okay. One stop, you pick the, the, the sample up, and then second stop. I'm missing a plate. Okay. Maybe I threw it away. I threw it away. Okay, you, okay. It's long nails, <laughs> long nails. <laughs> uh, I painted them, not in the lab. In the lab I should have no paint. Okay, yeah. Okay, one ml, one ml. You can do this with tap water, it's the same. Ah, no, you have your sample, so place the sample. Now, take off all the bubbles. Until there. Now, continue squeezing. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Make the, the liquid up until it reaches here. And then you stop making any pressure at all. That's okay. <laughs> no, okay. You squeeze. Mm -hmm. You put there mm -hmm. one ml, and that's all. You oh, make no pressure. You okay. maintain this. Okay. Okay. Did you rehydrate that? Then you have to place 0.1 ml with this pipette or with this pipette using the yellow tips of whatever you want. Sample, water, or juice. Okay. Okay, use these with a yellow tip and you place 0.1 ml of juice of tap water on a fish or you can place drops of this swab. Yes, yeah, somebody left a pipette there. Uh, tip there. Uh, no, point one on this edge. No, on this edge. Okay. <coughs> Did you pick anything? <laughs> okay, so use the other and maybe I can unblock it. Okay. I need a yellow tip. No, it's blocked with the juice. Yes, the sediment of the juice. So, okay, you have point one. Okay, and you place point one uh -huh. for the fish. Uh -huh. 
Okay. okay. I didn't sorry. Ah, you finished it. Okay. Now you have to sample one ml of whatever you want. A fish of this, drops of the other. This is a swab. Yes, that's a swab. You turn it down. And okay, you have here a dropper. Uh -huh. So you place drops okay, how many until, drops? Uh, I think it's five or six, until it's one line. Okay, okay what do you want to, to sample there? What, what it has? You have fish, you have water, you have juice, uh, whatever you want. <laughs> Fish, okay, okay, you can play. And where did you place this sample? Okay, so you can place fish there, one ml fish. Okay. What can I use? You can use for this the big pipette, this, and this big tip. Okay, it's okay. Because you need to place that in the front, in the middle. It's okay, it will spread all the way there okay Do so label? yes you have to label that label this and didn't don't you have the other ones okay I'll give you this and this are for you Okay, and you are the last but not least. You will help me to do all the wrong, thing, wrong things you shouldn't do when analyzing microbiology with this. Okay, when you are learning, you make no mistakes at all. I broke one lamp, an absorption one, because in Argentina we have a current that it's 220 volts. And that was an equipment of uh, point, point, uh, 110. And I didn't put the adapter. So I plug it, and when I put on, it just And all the lab went out, the light. And I say, I wasn't, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. <laughs> but uh, if anybody makes no mistake, that means you don't work. You are the chief. <laughs> so, uh, you need to work with your hands. So you are going to help me make all the mistakes we can. Okay. You stamp. Oh. So stamp whenever you want, but maybe it's better to stamp salmonella on top of the fish and the other on any surface, including hands. Okay. So stamp it. Okay. This. Okay. Hope nothing grows. <laughs> okay, and total stamp, you can stamp hands. anything. Hands, okay. Arms. Yes, on top of the table. Okay. Yes, it's okay. I, my, my hand was stamped too. So, okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Did you finish? Yes. Okay. Like this, very well cut. This you can do like this, and this like this. Okay. Now, come on. 